Hello, I'm Sun Che. I'm I'm currently a, a PhD student at KAIST. Um, this is joint work um with Wonjun Kim, Sungwon Kim, Yeonjun In, Sein In, Sein Kim, and Professor Chan Young Park. And first of all, uh, thank you for attending my presentation. Today I'm going to talk about my research paper DSLR, Diversity Enhancement and Structural Learning for Layer-Based Graph Continual Learning. First, uh, let me explain the problem we aim to address. Continual learning in GREP is depicted as follows. Uh, as new nodes and edges are continuously added, it is important to preserve past knowledge without retraining the model on the whole data set. The phenomenon of the model forgetting knowledge learned in the past is referred to as catastrophic, catastrophic forgetting, and reducing this forgetting is main challenge in continual learning. Continual learning is primarily investigated through three main approaches. Um, among these, a reserve-based approach is known to exhibit the best performance which we adapt in this uh, research. In the case of retraining, a uh, model is trained for all nodes when new data is introduced. In contrast, uh, a laser based approach selects the, a subset of nodes, which is called Lipley buffer, to train along with the newly introduced training set as illustrated in the below figure. Hence, the main challenge in this approach lies in selecting a representative Lipley buffer effectively. Um, the existing state-of-the-art method employs a mean feature approach, which selects nodes close to the center in the embedding space, like these two figures. However, these methods tend to induce overfitting as it only selects nodes from narrow regions. Therefore, we aim to select the replay buffer considering both representativeness and diversity. As a result, our model exhibited a more even selection from various regions, unlike the exi existing methods that tend to select node cluster in local regions. However, uh, in the process of selecting the buffer to increase diversity, it is inevitable that nodes with low homophily ratio near the decision boundary will also be selected. Therefore, as shown in the table on the left, uh, when using our methodology CD, which uh, considers diversity, uh, it was observed that the homophily ratio of the replay buffer was low. We all know that it is hard to train the model on the nodes with low homophily ratio because of the inductive bias of GNN. The figure on the right illustrates forgetting uh, with the average homophily ratio of the replay buffer for each class. Since the higher homophily ratio tends to decrease forgetting, directly using the replay buffer selected by CD results in significant forgetting. Then um, it's simply increasing the homophily ratio of replay nodes a beneficial strategy. Mm, we did not think so. As seen in the lead box on the right side of the figure, we observed that beyond a certain homophily ratio, um, the variance in performance increases or even the forgetting increases. Therefore, we conduct uh, structural learning to formulate the structure of replay nodes to be connected to truly informative neighbors. Um, now, uh, before explaining the methodology, we will organize the notation. Uh, let there be m sequential tasks and graph for each task is represented by gt. As tasks progress, the graph evolves gradually, which can be expressed by the following, following equations. And finally, our goal is to sequentially train a single backbone GNN model on multiple tasks. The simplified framework is as follows. We utilize CD to select a representative and diverse replay buffer. And as a new task begins, the graph evolves. And subsequently, we conduct structural learning to, on the selected replay buffer to connect truly informative neighbors and then perform the downstream tasks such as node classification. And this process is repeated as tasks continue to progress. Uh, first, let me introduce the coverage-based diversity 
method called CD. We define the cover cover of each node as a set of nodes within a specific area based on the Euclidean distance in the embedding space. We also adjust the distance based on the density of embedding for each class. Then we select replay nodes such that a union of their covers is maximized by using um, these uh, equations. And the number of buffers for each class is set proportionally uh, to the number of samples in the training set for that classes. Uh, more specifically, uh, maximizing the union of covers uh, enables the selection of a more diverse buffer. Um, the following case illustrates simply selecting nodes with largest cover. However, overlapping nodes, these two overlapping nodes uh, result in the buffer set cover only six nodes. Uh, on the other hand, maximizing the union of uh, covers allows inclusion of uh, totally seven nodes. Therefore, in the above equation, the union part signifies diversity, uh, while the argmax part signifies the representativeness of nodes. Next, let me explain the structure learning part. Uh, we train the link prediction module using both link prediction laws and node classification laws. Um, link prediction laws and the node classification laws simultaneously, and, uh, which is to capture structural proximity and homophilia ratio together for truly informative neighbors. The inference process using the trained link prediction module consists of edge addition and edge deletion. Edge addition is performed as connecting end nodes with highest score while maintaining the original neighbors. And edge addition is performed as removing edges uh, whose score is smaller than a certain threshold. And the overall architecture is as follows. And uh, because of, um, due to the time constraints, we omit the explanation here and please refer to the paper for further details. Um, we will explain the experimental section from now on. Uh, five data sets were utilized with varying network types and size. The baseline are as follows. They can be divided into models that apply continual learning to the vision and graph domain. Uh, and the main base uh, with the main baseline being a laser based approach applied to the graph domain. Uh, hyperparameters and evaluation protocol are as follows. Uh, PM, uh, PM is the performance uh, performance mean, uh, which is uh, refers to the average performance on preceding tasks after completing learning up to the last task. Uh, on the example in the live side, uh, the PM is calculated based on the average of 62.21, 79.25, 76.5, which is the performance of each task after training task three. And FM is the forgetting means, uh, which signifies the average decline in the performance compared to when each task is initially trained. So the F uh, forgetting for task one is 96.77, minus 62.21 and the forgetting for task two is calculated uh, by uh, 86.17 minus 79.25 yes and these are the main results and two metrics were used to evaluate the model performance across five across five data sets uh, the dsrl outperforms in terms of both um, PM and FM over all baseline and demonstrating low variance. And the laser based approaches, uh, such as continual GNN and ERGNN, outperforms other baseline in PM but show worse FM. Uh, we compare the ERGNN and continual GNN, which are both laser based approaches while varying the buffer size with our model, which is uh, DS era. Uh, the SRL shows mild decrease of the performance when the buffer size decreases, and the SRL can, can achieve comparable performance with a much smaller buffer size. 
Um, to examine the effectiveness of the CD module, we compared ERGNN with uh, DSLR without structure learning. Um, note that DSLR without the CD and structure learning modules is identical to ERGNN. And as illustrated, um, this uh, DSLR outperforms ERGNN regardless of the buffer size in both PM and FM. Uh, and the, when the buffer size increases from 1% uh, to 3%, the gain of performance of DSLR is more significant. And as illustrated in below, DSLR can cover the broad region with smaller buffer size. Uh, also, uh, to examine the effectiveness of structural learning module, we compare DSLR with uh, DSLR without structural learning. Mm. We observed that structural learning component uh, not only benefits the performance, but also the memory, memory efficiency. So um, totally, in summary, the, this paper is about uh, grab continual learning with diverse and representative replay nodes and structural learning for them. And contribution of this paper is summarized into following three points. Um, we emphasize the consideration of diversity when selecting the replay nodes, and we discover the substantial influence of the quality of neighbors surrounding of the replay nodes. And extensive experiments demonstrate the effectiveness and efficiency of our model. Okay, this is end of my presentation, and thank you for listening.